Wow, you guys loved part one of the series. It's not even funny. There's something very intriguing about bad women throughout time, I get it. I feel like due to traditional ancient views of the roles of men and women, female leaders have kind of just been sidestepped throughout history by their male counterparts. When really queens are half of history, you know what they say, behind every successful man, there's a strong woman. Well, behind every strong woman is just that strong woman and her perseverance. I'm saying it like these queens did good things, they didn't. They were labeled evil for a reason and before the guys come at me and leave anti-male comments, I'm all for equality you guys. I don't hate on men but as a woman my life experience is just vastly different. What is up you guys, hope you're having an awesome day. I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video. We are going back in time yet again today with the top 10 scary evil queens throughout history part 2. Starting us off at number 10 is Queen Rani Lakshmi by, also known as Rani of Chansi. Born in 1828, this Indian queen ruled over the state of Chansi during the 1850s. She was a central figure during the 1857 Indian Rebellion and most people know her as India's Joan of Arc. And if you know Joan's story then you already know she was a bad she would wrestle, weightlift, and steeplechase all before breakfast, which was amazing for a female to be doing in the 1800s. Rani wasn't born into royalty, but she married into it when she wed the Maharaja Gangadhar Rao Nivalkar in 1842. The couple had a son who died within months, so they adopted one of the Maharaja's sons as their own. After the king died, British officials refused their adopted son's claim to the throne and wanted to annex Chansey. Rani was like, hell no, I'm not giving you my life. Land. When the rebellion against the British started, there was a massacre of 40 to 60 European officers, and it's still debated whether the Queen was directly involved in it or not. Her forces did later defeat the mutineers during the siege when the place was going to up, she rode off on her horse with her son on her back. The horse died but they somehow survived. In June a squadron came down on them and she actually dressed up as a cavalry soldier and killed some troops. She was already wounded without a horse and just bleeding on the road before a troop came and shot her to death. Now, I don't think Rani was an evil queen per se, she loved her people and fought for them but I'm sure in the British view at the time they thought she was evil. But maybe you shouldn't colonize half the world then Britain, you know? Coming in at number 9 is Queen Consort Fridagunt of Soissons. There's a lot of debate whether Fridagunt was a queen, a woman that just wanted to survive, or a full on murderer. Her story is very much started from the bottom now we hear kind of vibe. She started off as King Chilperic's the first servant, then moved out to become his concubine, and finally she managed to seduce him to leave his first wife Odovera. I know I may have pronounced that wrong, I think it's Odovera. Either way, they put her in a convent and that sucks for her. And just imagine how much control she must have had since Odovera was powerful even without the king since she was a Merovingian queen. This is already a queen. She's taken down by a servant, concubine. But the fight wasn't over yet because in a few years the king then married his second wife Galswith who was the older sister of Queen Boonhild of Metz. I'm sorry you guys, there's a lot of hard pronunciations in this video and I'm only a mere mortal. Now to get rid of her second obstacle, Frisagund convinced the king to kill her and mere days after their wedding she was found strangled in her own bed. That obviously didn't go down well with Brunthild who then had a feud with Frisagund for 40 years. But she didn't give a damn, she assassinated the queen's husband via poisoned axe, then tried to kill her brother-in-law the king of Burgundy, she then tried to kill their son and then she tried to kill the queen herself. So when I tell you this woman had no mercy or remorse, I am not exaggerating. Queen Consort Fredegund was essential for the king since she was good at arranging discreet or not so discreet assassinations. Queen Brunshild then married Fredegund's stepson Merovich and they tried to take the couple over. But the Queen Consort forged a secret alliance with Duke Guntram of Metz, an enemy of her husband, and kidnapped Merovich and killed him. King Shilpari just believed his son had somehow stabbed himself to death and never asked his concubine about it. I hope you guys are following. I put a lot of effort into this. Just ignore my pronunciations. At number 8 we have Queen Tamer of Georgia, born way way back in 1160. Tamer was born into royalty since her dad was King George III of Georgia. Now, After a bloody revolt led by conspirators, George made Tamer his co-ruler in 1178 which was heavily opposed after he died. Look at the year, do you think they would have ever been okay with a woman being in charge? Absolutely not, it's 1178. She divorced her first husband after realizing he was not only gay but 
also an alcoholic. And this guy, Yuri, was so pissed he tried to stage a coup against her twice and she just swatted him away like a fly. Her second husband, David, supported her in every way and that's the kind of man she needed. That's the kind of man we all need. Now, Tamer was sometimes called King Tamer, which is very interesting. She expanded and took over her neighboring territories with no mercy. She would take her army and reduce local princes to nothing. They would siege and ransack Muslim districts and fortresses and just take them. Despite not caring about literally anyone but herself, her power and her territory, Tamer made her empire incredibly strong and stable by enacting a kind of feudal system. Hey, kudos to her for standing her ground, but you also don't have to kill everyone you see, you know? Filling at number seven slot is Queen Zenobia. This may be the oldest queen I've mentioned in this series thus far. Born in 240 AD, this third century queen's history and parentage is very much debated. Since information about her is so scarce, no one is quite sure whether she was born royal or not, but based on her level of education, she was definitely not a commoner. Some sources even say she was Cleopatra's descendant, which is kind of insane. She married King Septimius Odonathus, who ruled over Palmyra and later the whole east and crowned his oldest son as his co-ruler. Zenobia went with them on all their campaigns and the soldiers really liked her for morale. She was probably hot, I'm not gonna lie to you. Sadly, the king and his son were assassinated by their cousin, after which Zenobia soon took over. Now there's some conspiracies claiming she was involved in planning the assassination because she didn't approve of her stepson on the throne, but some people say she was actually there when they got assassinated and she was just spared, who knows. Septimius controlled a huge part of the Roman East and was the highest military and political authority in the region, so for Zenobia to take that over was pretty damn tough. She demanded allegiance and later invaded Egypt just to have another trade route to the river Euphrates. She didn't have to do it, the normal route wasn't completely blocked but she just had that zeal and ambition. She appeased everyone she ruled over and was a Syrian monarch, Roman empress, Hellenistic queen who people loved. However, she kind of just declared herself empress of Rome which caused her to be called a usurper and her death very much soon followed. Now at number six is Qasim Sultan. Um, and I tried to Google pronounce how to say this name because it is a Turkish name, but I couldn't find anything, so I think it's Qasim. Don't hate me if I'm wrong. Now, Kosum was one of, if not the most powerful women in Ottoman history who had a very humble beginning. Now, her dad was a priest and she was bought as a slave and sent to be a harem for Sultan Ahmed I. Kosum was his favorite and gave him multiple children and therefore many of them were princesses, giving her power. The Sultan liked her so much that in 1612, he ordered a woman to be brutally beaten just because she had irritated his beloved. She was in power from 1605 to 1617 and first ascended to power when her son Murad IV became the Sultan. She outlived most of her male family members and had to act as regent thrice. It was said she was willing to kill anyone just to make sure her sons were on the throne, aka she was on the throne because they were all far too young. Her downfall eventually came when her daughter-in-law assassinated her in 1651. Trust no one. It's gonna be your damn own who do it. Coming in at number five is Elizabeth I, AKA the Virgin Queen or Gloriana, which I've never heard of. Gloriana, who's called her that? Now, as a daughter of Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn, whose marriage got annulled, Elizabeth was ruled an illegitimate child. She was in prison during Mary I's reign for supposedly supporting the Protestant cause. After she finally died in 1558, Elizabeth became the queen and quickly established an English Protestant church. And the woman was actually really well liked she didn't meddle too much in international affairs until war was literally knocking on her door and she was celebrated for her virginity. Even though she was low-key in love with Robert Dudley her whole life, but we can just sweep that under the rug. But since Mary had made her life hell for not being a Catholic, Elizabeth abolished the Catholic Church. And despite saying she was tolerant of all religions, she was oppressing all the Catholics. Supporting Catholicism was an unlawful offense wherein the monarchy could have you beaten, imprisoned, have your property taken away, or just fall on execute you. She also made Mary Queen of Scots life hell since the French wanted her in power and Elizabeth obviously did not. She hated Mary since some thought Mary was the heir to the English throne since under Catholic and Protestant law Elizabeth was illegitimate. So the two just made each other's lives hell. 
round number four is Tomoe Gozen. Born around 1157, Tomoe was a Onagugeisha, also known as a female warrior. It's actually debated whether she was a real historical figure or someone in literature, but I'm just going to treat her as she was real. Her father supported Lord Kiso since her family had ties to him, and she's best known for serving him during the Genpei War and in the Battle of Owazu. As beautiful as she was, she was an even more skilled archer and swordswoman. Tomoe was literally ready to face any demon or devil in her way. She'd ride untrained horses and was utterly fearless to the point Lord Kiso would send her out in battle first. Sometimes referred to as the first general of Japan, in 1182 she commanded over 300 samurai against 2,000 rival clan warriors. Her side lost the battle of Owazu and apparently she beheaded the leader of the Musashi clan and presented it to her master. I don't think she's evil at all, I think she's a full-fledged badass and I'm here for it. Filling at number three saw is Empress Catherine the Great. Born in 1729, Catherine was the Empress of Russia for 34 years, making her the country's longest ruling female ever. Born into royalty, her dad was a German prince, and her first two cousins became kings of Sweden later on. When she first arrived in Russia, no one had any idea that this random, irrelevant German princess would somehow eventually marry Tsar Peter III. Now, Peter was quite unpopular since he was an alcoholic, and Catherine met him at age 10 and hated him. She would stay at one end of the castle while he was on the other end. She learned Russian and became super fluent to the point she would wake up in the middle of the night and practice her lessons which gave her pneumonia. But she would do anything for the crown. Once they got married, she had a string of affairs and the palace started hating Peter more and more. Then in 1762, she launched a coup against Peter and overthrew him, becoming the queen, and later went on to assassinate him. Zam, Zaddy, you literally killed your own husband for the throne. But then again, she hated him, so really, whatever. Now number two is Queen Boudicca. Now she was the queen of the British Celtic Iceni tribe, who eventually led an uprising against the forces of the Roman Empire. Boudicca was of royal parentage, and her husband, Prasutigus, was the king of the Iceni, which is current day Norfolk. When her husband was killed, troops from the Roman Emperor took her and tortured her her daughters and her tribe's money was all taken. Not taking this lightly at all, she came back with a vengeance with 100,000 Iceni troops and fought Legio the Ninth Hispania and killed nearly 80,000 people. People said that she was a treacherous lioness who butchered the governors who had been left to give a fuller voice and strength to the endeavors of Roman rule. She was so close to being victorious when she was tragically captured and instead of being killed, she killed herself. Again, I don't think Boudicca was evil. In war, Especially in those times, you have to kill people for your own people's sake. It's your people or your rivals, people. <laughs> and finally, Adam one is Queen Maria Eleonora of Sweden. Now, born into royalty, Maria was a German princess before she married King Gustav II Adolphus of Sweden in 1620. And they were both suited to each other, you know, they had the same interests and actually loved each other, and it was more than just a political marriage. But Maria was extremely ill tempered, jealous, neurotic, and just plain dramatic. She said whatever she thought and spared no one, not even her own husband. A year after their marriage, she she suffered miscarriage that made her quite depressed and she really wanted to give Gustav a son. She gave birth to a daughter who died and her third child who was a boy ended up being stillborn due to a yacht accident. Then finally in 1626 she gave birth to princess later queen Christina and due to her depression and erratic behaviour she wasn't told her gender till a few days after the birth. When she found out she said instead of a son I am given a daughter dark and ugly with a great nose and black eyes. Take her from me, I will not have such a monster. There started the multiple attempts of Mira trying to kill Christina. She once pushed her down the stairs, another time she dropped a heavy beam on her cradle, one of her nursemaids dropped her on the floor and injured her shoulder, but I don't know how that was accidental. The worst was when she made Christina sleep under the rotting heart of her then dead father Gustav. This woman was a monster. And that is it for today's video, guys. I know I high key struggle with the pronunciation of a lot of these princesses and queens, but bear with me, I really do try my best. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. As always, I'm your host, Eamon Hassan, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Oh, that was hard. Rani wasn't born into loy loyalty. <laughs> Wait, no. <Nope>. Damn it. <laughs> okay, I'll just go slow. Gangadar. I got it. Yes. <laughs> She started off as King Shilpahik the first f This is why I booked two slots. <laughs> Shilpahik. Okay. She started off as King Shilpahik.
But the fight wasn't over yet because in 567 the king married. 567? 1567, maybe? Is it? Can you go up a bit? Did I mention a date prior? Now at number six. Oh, what the frickin' heck. Thank you.